Well, I guess the first thing to say is it's not a surprise. We knew this was coming. Uh, inflation has been high for several months. It's taking a while for that inflation to kind of work through into the consumer price index. Uh, but no one was shocked at the number that came in today. In fact, if you looked at financial markets, uh, they actually went up because things were not worse than, than they feared they might have been. And so at the simplest level, inflation comes when there's more purchasing power in people's hands than there are goods and services for them to buy, and that drives up the prices. So you can look at both the supply and the demand sides to determine that. So on the demand side, the Federal Reserve pursued a very easy money policy during COVID. That was completely appropriate. If you recall, things were pretty desperate a year and a half ago, and we were very glad that the Fed was supplying all the support to the economy it could. Um, Interest rates are still very low, and that's supplying, that, that's producing a lot of demand in the economy. Mortgages are still relatively cheap, loans are still relatively cheap. That encourages people to buy things. Uh, in addition, uh, the federal government put a lot of money in people's pockets through PPP loans and various other uh, policies during the pandemic. Again, it was a very scary time, and that was the right thing to do. The overhang from that is that households have a lot of purchasing power and they want to buy stuff. So that's the demand side. On the supply side, there are kind of two big things that have happened. So one have been all these supply chain uh, snafus that we've read about, the chip factories uh, being shut down, shipping not getting through, and that drives up prices. And then on top of that, there's been the shock to energy prices, which was happening before the war in Ukraine, but has gotten much worse since the war in Ukraine. And so that's driven up fuel prices uh, above all other things, but driven up lots of other prices as well. So it's this uh, combination of sort of the overhang of policy uh, and these other very unlucky shocks coming on top of it. Now, so, you know, the, the standout price increases is um, oil products, uh, oil, uh, heating, you know, gasoline, diesel, uh, heating oil, jet fuel, and so on. Uh, products that use that. So, for example, air travel uh, prices have gone up a huge amount. Um, some food prices have gone up a lot as well, like beef. Um, other food prices haven't gone up yet, but with what's happening in Ukraine, uh, they may in the future, things like, um, like grain prices. Uh, so those are sort of the, the biggest price increases. There have been uh, price increases for uh, home ownership and rental housing, uh, because we've kind of had a booming housing market. Um, and then just sort of odd things, again, because of these um, supply chain disruptions. So uh, there was a problem with the chips that go into new cars. So new car prices went up a lot. Because new car prices went up a lot, a lot of people wanted to buy used cars. And so used car prices went up a lot. So you know, with the supply chain disruptions, there's been this kind of um, shifting and, and sometimes almost arbitrary seeming shortages. So for example, a year ago it was lumber, and lumber prices were were up a lot. And unfortunately, uh, with COVID in China still being such an issue, there's some possibility that this is going to continue for you know, the next half year. If, as I say, the, you know, the king of them all is energy. The king mm. of them all is, is oil. Oil is traded on a world market, even though the United States is a very large oil producer. Uh, when uh, there's insufficient supply in the world, that's going to drive prices up here. That translates into prices at the pump very, very quickly. And so people see that. But then if you think about something like beef, there's, you know, figuratively speaking, a lot of oil in beef. There's, there's you know, the trucks that drove the grain to the feedlots and carried the meat here and there and, and so on and so on. So some of it's that. Um, and then really every industry has its own particular story. And it's worth emphasizing, you know, we had prices rise 8.5% on average over the last year. There are prices that have risen less than that. So I, I just happened to look at the BLS report, and apparel prices rose uh, somewhat less than 8.5%. So I suppose if you're a person who doesn't eat a lot of beef and doesn't drive a lot but likes buying clothes, that's good news for you. Uh, and that's how it is with inflation. It's not that every price goes up. Some go up more and some go up less. Yeah, so by the book, this is the, the biggest year-on-year uh, -year price increase that we've seen in, I think, 41 years. Uh, it's worth mentioning that that inflation 41 years ago, so that's 1981, was the tail of a very long inflationary episode that began 
uh, you know, in the early 1970s. And so it was very different then. People had gotten used to high inflation. We were in the middle of kind of getting rid of that inflation through a series of recessions engineered by the Federal Reserve uh, under Paul Volcker. But having been in college at that time, I can tell you uh, inflation was something that was kind of front and center in our lives. It wasn't news that there was high inflation. Where we are now in the United States is we've had this sudden eruption in inflation after really decades in which this was not an issue. Um, and in all likelihood, it will be a brief eruption. We may well have a recession, uh, again engineered by the Federal Reserve, to uh, stop inflation uh, from going up. But at least if you look at what financial markets are saying, there's very little chance that we're really entering another period of prolonged 1970s style inflation. So when we look back 10 years from now, I think what we'll see, or what the financial markets think that we'll see, is a, a very brief eruption of inflation, possibly followed by a recession, but a return of, of price increases back down to 2 or 3 percent, which is where the Federal Reserve targets them. A concrete example, if you think about someone who's on Social Security, Every year uh, with Social Security, you get a cost of living adjustment. In this last year, the cost of living adjustment was something like 6%. So if you're a Social Security recipient, in January, you saw your check go up by 6%. You probably thought, oh, this is great. I can buy 6% more stuff, and that's very nice. But of course, over the rest of this year, your monthly check is going to be the same. And on average, prices are going to be drifting up over that period. And so you're going to see your purchasing power diminished. And so that's true for people on a fixed income. That's true for a lot of wage earners. Uh, that's sort of the unfortunate thing about inflation is it's nice when your wages go up. Uh, it's not nice when the prices you have to pay go up. Ask me about this, but um, high inflation is obviously going to be something of a political football. Um, people are not happy when they see prices go up. It erodes their purchasing power. Uh, and that tends to make them uh, unhappy with someone, with some politician or another. I don't think it's going too far into partisanship to say that the bout of inflation we're having now is not really the product of decisions by uh, our politicians. Uh, it is primarily the result of the supply chain interruptions due to COVID and an overhang from the Federal Reserve's uh, policies to cushion the economy during COVID. So uh, it's clearly not that economic policy making has been perfect, but sort of the partisan things that really both sides bring to the table uh, or will bring to the table in this discussion uh, are probably not that relevant to, to why we're experiencing inflation now. Uh, the economy had a very, very hard time with COVID. Uh, we did a lot of extraordinary things to keep the economy afloat. That was all good. And if uh, the result of that is that we're going to have to tolerate a brief period of inflation, that's probably not such a high price to pay.